Greetings Gemstones, it's your boy Templeton Page Taylor. Welcome back to a brand new episode of Hidden Gem. Welcome, welcome, welcome. And on today's episode, I'm going to be doing a review on the very first game I had on my PlayStation, which was Wild Arms. Now as you all know, I don't have an actual PlayStation anymore, due to having to sell it in the past and everything else, but I do have a PlayStation Classic. And I played the game on that, beat it, so let's get into the review. Here we go. Created by MediaVision and published by Sony, Wild Arms is about how Felgaia is about to be in trouble once more. Demons have returned to wreak havoc and the Guardians are nowhere to be found. Here we have our heroes, Rudy, the cast out of society. Rudy has a lot of characters despite his one line in the entire game. You see him through the lens of other characters and he's made out to be very interesting through their eyes. He also has one intense twist later on down the line. He's what you would consider our Luke Skywalker character. Then we have Cecilia, with her magical ability, her teardrop, and the urge to leave her princess duties. A combo of warm heartedness and ditziness, but also trying to find herself, our Princess Leia, so to speak. And finally, there's Jack our roguelike character with a mouse companion, treasure hunter for hire, and our Han Solo character in a way based on his attitude. You start out with having a choice of these three characters that you play individually, which gives good background about each of these characters. Only having three to focus on, you really get to know them, and that is great as they grow on you. After you complete each player's origin, you all meet up in Cecilia's kingdom a day before the celebrations of the golems. Golems are sideshows now that used to be used as weapons in the past, until the quarter knights show up the day of the celebration and wreck the place because they are looking for an item called the teardrop to revive mother and take over the world. As cliche as that sounds, the story of wild arms is pretty solid and a little dark at times. In the beginning, you have to confirm the bodies of dead children after the attack of the castle. A character will cut off their own arm to escape from danger. Another will eat their own offspring. And a platoon of soldiers are taken out like nothing. It's pretty intense stuff. The game and world map are drawn in 2D artwork with some Mode 7 thrown in there for nostalgia. The characters are sprites, and these aspects are very well done. The towns were awesome to traverse, and I like the fact that the roof of buildings would just fade off as you entered into them. In battle though, it goes into a 3D environment. The battle animations were nice, and some enemies were interesting, but this is what caused other players to be drawn away from the game entirely. Although the quarter knights and some bosses looked amazing, the guardians that you require all throughout Felgaia are hand-drawn in this 3D environment. They're flat, unshaded, and they look really bad. And in my personal opinion, they were a poor choice for the 3D environment. The music in this game is great. The town's themes are very catchy, and the world map music is one of the most recognizable tracks, as well as Adelheide Castle and the opening theme into the wilderness and the sound effects aren't too bad either except for some animal and character reactions voice actors were used for those sounds but not very well at times for example every time you attack an enemy a cat meows some laughter is in there and it sounds very fake and dog barks well they're obviously not from real dogs I did like one thing I did like was the game menu. You can name your characters and spells as you acquire them, program your characters in battle, change camera angles, choose different icons. There's also a screensaver built into the game. Pretty neat. The navigation of the puzzles 
is one great aspect of the game and very balanced in times even when your characters have to be split up. All of the tools gained to solve these puzzles are used very well also. The exploration is great with the large overworld. It's one of many games that allows 2D sprites to move in all 8 directions on the world map and everywhere else you go, towns, etc. One thing, battles are turn based and each character is individual, individual as well as when it comes to combat. One thing that was also interesting was that you input all the party's actions in at the beginning of the battle and then you watch it all play out instead of taking turns with each character. Also, when traversing the world map, battles would resemble the terrain you were traveling in. You got into a fight in the forest, you're surrounded by trees. Overworld covered in sand, you're battling with sand and sky all around you. If you were confused after battle, the controls would be inverted for a very short time. That was a pretty neat thing I like, in my personal opinion. When it came to battles, uh, each character had a different system. Rudy had an arm system, which meant that he could use guns, such as a bazooka, rocket launcher, and a hand cannon. And his upgrades are stupid expensive, but they are definitely worth it. Rudy's bonus ability is to focus shots on most of the enemies, and some weapons needed this since they have very, very low accuracy. Cecilia has both black and white magic by binding crest graphs, items that you find throughout the game which take two different elements to make a spell. Cecilia's bonus ability can enhance items when used like using a healing apple for all three characters instead of one. And finally, you have Jack who has fast draw sword techniques which he finds all throughout the game. His bonus causes beast mode damage to enemies, which with certain weapons, Jack can easily do 9,999 damage. Another interesting thing about the gameplay is the amount of modes to travel in. By foot, obviously walking or running, by air, by sea, and by golem, which eliminates random encounters. All of these methods had some secret areas that they can be reached only by them and they made the traveling aspect of the game so much fun. I really enjoyed this very, very much. And there you have it, Wild Arms in a nutshell. Now personally, this game is always gonna be dear to my heart because it was the very first game that I had on my PlayStation. So I'll always have that nostalgic feeling whenever I play it. If I wanted to give this game a rating, I would give it an 8 out of 10. Um, mainly because it's not perfect, but it's not bad either. But I still give it a good score because it had great music, awesome gameplay, the battling was fun, the enemies were interesting. All in all, I really enjoyed this game. I uh, definitely would recommend it. If you want to play it, definitely get a PlayStation Classic or you can buy it online. For sure so there you go that is my review of wild arms but before I go number one thing I want to say is I hope you guys like the new setup that I put up over here I've got a couple new things with the uh, Mega Man 11 and Blockman and the Metroid figurines which uh, my wife bought thank you very much babe um, also I want to say because of what we have going on right now it's a very, very difficult time for everybody, even me here at home and uh, where I'm at. And it's not the easiest thing to do to stay inside all the time and, you know, sometimes you can play video games, but you can always get burned out. Uh, so I am going to probably try to do everything I can to put as much content up for you guys to watch while we're going through such dire situations, so to speak. And I want to thank you all for watching my videos. Thank you all for watching today's video. And as always, do me a favor, Gemstones, and stay shiny for me.